What's up, fellas? Welcome back to Kingdom Engineering. Now, it has been a little bit since our last video, but today we're talking about everything that floats. There were quite a few questions posted on the previous episode, and I intend to answer those here. By the way, if you haven't watched the previous episode, you should probably go do that. It should be showing on your screen right now. If you have any questions remaining after this one, or you just want to stay updated for the next episode, you should subscribe. With your help, we can reach 500 before my birthday in May. But enough yapping, let's get straight into it. Today, we're going to be focusing on two main parts, both of which can be found in the John Sao Shrine. If I mispronounced that, feel free to correct me in the comments. But these two parts have a very special quality. They float. Like, with anything. And I mean anything. All jokes aside, these orbs and platforms are perfect for making boats. They can float even with incredible amounts of weight, and they aren't flammable or fragile like wood. As for how you can get your hands on them, there are two methods. Method 1 is the most accessible, as all it requires is that you have two weapons with nothing fused to them. What you do is you go into the shrine and fuse the ball to one of your weapons, then you do the puzzle, go into the next room, there will be an enemy you have to fight, it's not here for me because, you know, I killed it already. Fuse the second thing to a second weapon, you can cheese it or do the puzzle legit if you want, then you can either finish the shrine or just leave. It's up to you. This method does include a little follow-up at Terrytown, but we'll show that after. For the second method, you have to have auto-build, but all you have to do is grab the orb, carry it into the next room, minding the enemy, fuse it, and now you can spawn it with auto-build, whatever. Now, with that out of the way, let's assemble some contraptions. So, first up, I'm gonna answer a question from the last video. A lot of people were asking why the train kept exploding, seemingly for no reason. Well, to answer that, we need to take a quick detour. Here we are back at the volcano, and here is the carton in question. You recognize this little chamber in the back of it? In case you don't, it's time for a trip to an ancient game you may not remember, called Breath of the Wild. Wow, can you believe this game is eight years old? I said it was ancient as a joke, but it's seriously getting there. Anyway, here we have these carts. You propel them with explosions. Place a remote bomb here, and the detonation pushes it forward. Now, back to the present. These carts still work the same way, but instead of remote bombs, we now use cannons. So now that's answered, but what does that have to do with today's topic? Well, carts aren't the only things that can be propelled with explosions. But before I forget, here is a really sped up version of the follow-up for Method 1. I don't know why it's so laggy, but basically you just warp to Terrytown and then talk to this Pelican guy, then you can unfuse your weapons, and then you can play with the stuff you got, but only around Terrytown. But anyways, when you think of boats on the water, the most likely method of propulsion is to use fans. They're easy to get, fairly reliable, and as an added bonus, they consume less battery when in the water. However, there is a better option. One that increases speed, takes less battery, and looks a hell of a lot cooler. That's right. I'm talking about cannons. A little fact that I'm sure most people generally don't think about is that in Tears of the Kingdom, explosives detonate on the water rather than sinking into it. If I throw a bomb flower at the ocean, it won't just sink into the depths, it blows up on the surface. That makes it possible to do this. Wow, so cool! But it's not stable enough. And you know what that means. It's time to bring back an old friend, the Stabilizer. While we're at it, we will have to add some fans. But hey, we're here to make boats, not to be stingy. Come on. Now look at this go. 
But while we're here, I have an interesting fact about this design. You see, it effectively has lower gravity. When a boat with fans goes off a cliff, the fans would normally push it forward, and without the stabilizer, it would be pushed downward in the direction the boat is facing. However, due to the stabilizer keeping the boat upright, it's pushed forward rather than down, giving this low gravity effect. It makes you fall slower and travel further in the air. Just a cool little box. But what if we wanted to add a little more oomph to our boat? Like, let's say, 10 cannons worth of oomph. Well, vehicles in this game actually have a speed cap. Go too fast, and the steering stick will buck you off. Be warned. But we're not gonna let some game limits stop us, are we? We're here for speed. Just because the game doesn't improve doesn't mean we have to give up. There is a very simple solution. Trap Link in a box. You can use a variety of parts for this, but I will be using this U-block. The U-block can be found in the right leg depot of the Construct Factory. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to tell you because it includes spoilers, but I might make a short on it later. So now, we have officially done it. We have created speed. And with that, our journey is officially complete. With this, I have hopefully bestowed upon you the knowledge needed to go forth and create. I would love to see what you make. If you want to submit a clip for featuring in a video, or just show something off in general, head on over to our Discord server. That's on screen now, and in the description. I would hope to see you there, and always remember, you don't just have to stay afloat when you can build an awesome boat. If you somehow didn't think that pun was awful, please subscribe. Okay, bye.